All right. Good morning. Today is July 25th, 2024, and this is day six of creating original Bob Proctor style speeches of at least eight minutes until somebody hires me to speak. As I will say at the beginning of every video, none of this was created using AI. Uh, this is all original creative content from my own mind, from my studies. All right, let's get into it. Good morning. Today we are going to dive in the process of breaking barriers, how we get stuck, and how powerful it is to find the strength and push ourselves through. Now paradigms are, of course, the major element when it comes to breaking barriers, but I want to iron down more of the theory behind why it is so hard to break those barriers, and why almost no one does, and even many of those that do, stop breaking down barriers once they get to a certain point. I'll share a couple personal anecdotes along with all of this content. In this case, with me and you, I think we're both really dreamers. I don't think that I would be doing this and you would be watching if we didn't have a desire to see our dreams manifest into reality. With that being said, the greater your dreams, the more you will have to embody the 13 principles of success along with many of the other aspects of the mind in order to see them through. In addition, the greater your dreams, generally, the larger the barriers are going to be. This isn't a comfortable process. This isn't all sunshine and rainbows. But it is worth it. It is magical. It does represent growth, and that is what I am really about. I'm about changing, growing, evolving, and breaking the cycle. In my own life, I have had many barriers to break through in business and more. And honestly, even in my own life, I almost do this to a detriment where I make, I break through a barrier, and then I'm just like, I'm just looking for a barrier to break right then. I don't even want to sit in that space, you know, it's sometimes you got to be a little bit more patient than I have been, I think. Um, it causes a lot of stress, but one of the most simple barriers that I had to break through in business comes from my experience as a bookseller. Well, it was a barrier to just go and start my own business as well, alone with very little money after graduating college. It was even harder to break out from being just a little bookseller to someone who really viewed myself as a great bookseller. And, uh, you know, who was able to handle books of a very high value, who was able to analyze books of a high value. I had to act like the person I wanted to become. I'm still working on that, but let me tell you a small thing that was very hard for me that rewarded me richly. There's an auction near me that has some high-level dealers. The kinds of guys that are sort of intimidating to a younger guy like me, who's just getting his feet wet in the business. And for what it's worth, this is just my perspective on the book business, but they aren't, as a general rule, I've gone to book fairs in New York um, and, and around, and I, I can't say I'm a big fan of the aura that I find in these places, very above the shoulders type stuff, you know, and, and it is what it is, I'm not, I'm not judging these people, I'm just telling you what it is and, and how a young person going into the business perceive it as a very hostile environment. And so, they talk deeply about certain titles. Oh, oh, you know, uh, you know, this book that was published in 1700, uh, you know, on page 53, you know that, and then the inscription was blah, 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 and, and it's very cool stuff, very amazing stuff, but as a dealer, it's like, it's kind of a, a test of knowledge. It's like, oh, you don't know that much? You're not good enough, you know? But in a way, I felt insignificant in their presence. However, I went home one day and built a vision of how I could see myself as a capable seller that was on their level. That could deal with books that are thousands of dollars. At the time, I was only dealing with books that were worth maybe a few hundred at the top end, mostly $20 to $50 books. You want to know the hardest thing for me? It wasn't the knowledge. I knew that I didn't even need the knowledge to sell books and to acquire books. I had the ability to price them regardless of my deep knowledge of a 1526 manuscript with this inscription, you know? But... It wasn't the knowledge, it wasn't the pricing, it wasn't the actual ability to buy and sell books that I was struggling with. It was presenting myself as a person that sells books. And what does that mean? It meant wearing a suit, fixing up my hair, standing straight, and doing the work I knew I could do. It might sound trivial, but it wasn't to me. I'm always so hyper aware of how people are viewing me that I got scared to present myself as higher than I currently am, from an objective standpoint. I think that many of us, if not all of us, can share in the sentiment, and if you search your memory or current goals, 
I think you will find things that you could have done or could now be doing that while scary are worth doing because they allow you to put yourself up there, not thinking about what other people think. People, as a general rule, are the strongest barrier to you moving forward, other than, you know, the inside of your own mind, I guess. People will judge you both consciously and subconsciously. People will, will shoot off energy in every direction. They have no idea what they're doing with their mind, okay? And so they're gonna, they're gonna do everything they can unconsciously and, and consciously to affect a person that wants to have an ego, you know? And we'll talk a little bit more about ego. You have to fall in love with overcoming that. Not because you have an ego that is inflated, not because you want to be better than anybody else, rather because you have a dream and your dream is valid. Your dream is worth seeing to its fullest end and hey, if it turns out not to be your purpose, dream on. You cannot connect the dots looking forward, only backwards, and therefore you must live out your current dream to its end in order to guide you to whatever the ultimate purpose is, whether that be what you're currently dreaming of or if it be something that is not even conscious to you right now. I want to make an analogy to the, this Russian doll, Ma Matryoshka, I think, I, I didn't look this up, but it's the doll where you have all the layers to it, you know, the big outside layer and then they get progressively smaller as you dive deep into it. I want to take the inverse of this. I want you to imagine that you're starting in that smallest space within, with all the barriers around you. Then you break into the larger space, but still with barriers, then a larger space, and you break through. And with each successive space, here's the analogy, the room you have to move gets larger, all right? And the barriers take up a smaller proportion of the total space. Eventually, you break through that final barrier and you free yourself completely from that space. Not that there isn't now a large room for you to break through, a house for you to break through, a world for you to break through, and a universe for you to break through. But the point being... When you start in that very small space, everywhere you look are barriers. There's nowhere for you to move, all right? You break into that next space, okay, there's a couple barriers. There's a couple barriers. When you break into that bigger space, you might float around and think there's no barriers for a little bit. You really feel that good. Eventually, you'll find the barriers, and you break through those too. But once you get used to breaking barriers, there's really no limit as to what you can do because you can set any target, and you will push through whatever barriers are there until you get to that target. The world becomes a playground which you get to build. For me, book selling was a huge barrier, but so was getting up on stage and competing in natural bodybuilding. I think it's important to mention here w what my personality really is. Now, if you meet me on the street and we just chat it up, you're gonna probably think I'm an extrovert. You're probably going to have conceptions about how I was raised and, and how I went through life. Well, let me, tell you that I was weird, awkward, introverted, always in my own head, and thinking about what other people thought, and I was deathly afraid of expressing myself in any remotely creative way, all right? That's my truth, okay? I pushed through those barriers, and now I love it more than anything because I spent all that time in my own space, and I realized that I have things to give, and we all have things to give, for sure. So, it was quite intimidating at first, but you know what happened? After I got up on stage that first time, all I wanted to do was get back up on that stage. All I wanted to do was share my truth, share what I've done with my body so that others can be inspired and appreciate the work that I have put in. When you break through these barriers, you start to fill your heart with the spirit of service. You start to break through the barriers, not just for yourself, but for the people you want to help, for the community, for the country, for the world, and for the universe. I hope you enjoyed this video, and see you tomorrow. Was that eight? Hey!